the Palm Beach Civic Association expands its communication outreach with a state-of-the-art television studio. We call it Studio 33480, the zip code for the beautiful island of Palm Beach. Sponsored by Finley Galleries, our goal is to bring you in-depth interviews with the most colorful and knowledgeable personalities on the island. And now, our host. Welcome to Studio 33480. I'm Wendy Rutledge. If there's one topic that seems to stir not only people's interests, but sometimes their emotions, it is immigration. Well, with us today is someone who knows an awful lot about it, a leading authority on immigration law. Please welcome Austin Fragman. Welcome, Austin. Well, well, thank you very much, Wendy. I'm really delighted to be here today. And talk about my favorite topic. Yes, uh, you are the expert. And we should say you are director here with the um, Civic Association. So yes, yes, we're happy you're here with us. The, the, the border is huge. It's porous. It's porous. Uh, is there any recommendation to, to do the wall, to, do the, to make it less porous? Yeah, I think, I think that's one of the things you have to do. You basically need to have a physical or virtual barrier, you know, in uh, low, in, um, areas that aren't very heavily populated. I think a virtual border is sufficient, you know, trip wires, cameras, things like that. And then you can have border patrol people respond when, you know, when, when they have to. That's what they do in the Canadian border. Um, they don't have a wall, um, as I think we're all well aware. Um, but in the populated, the heavily populated area, of course, you really have to have a physical barrier. But yeah, you, you definitely need to, um, to do that. Um, and you also have to motivate Mexico um, to stop, um, you know, stop persons coming from Central and South America through southern portion of Mexico. As you know, that's a, um, that's a very small uh, choke point there. So it would be fairly easy for the Mexicans to um, uh, help us uh, out to a greater extent. And of course, longer term, you have um, our vice president, um, who visits um, Central America and talks to um, the leaders of those countries about improving conditions so people don't want to leave. But that seems like a very long-term project um, to... A great you know, goal, yeah, but right, a great goal. not an immediate goal, answer. Yeah, Not yeah. an immediate answer, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, but I think you need, to, you, you need to put all of these pieces together simultaneously. You're not um, making it sound easy. It's not easy. No, it's not easy. <laughs> That's for sure. At That's for all. Sure. Mm -hmm. So tell us about what are your thoughts on uh, these couple of governors from Texas, our, our own Florida governor, um, sending the busloads of immigrants to these so-called sanctuary mm -hmm. cities. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your thoughts? Well, I mean, I, you know, I, I think um, you have to you have to first assume that they all were willing and wanted to go, right? And can you make that, that assumption? Um, well, they, they purportedly that's um, yeah. that's the case. Okay. The governors <laughs> involved say it's the case. I mean, yeah. I've never interviewed any of them, so I have no idea. Okay. So, <laughs> but but assuming that's true, uh, the reality is that virtually everyone who's um, uh, you know, admitted to the U.S. in this temporary status, um, waiting hearings and whatnot, travel on to another destination, and many of them go to the same cities. The difference is that they go to um, this, they, they they go to join relatives or people they know, or or the community at large. So I think the big problem with the sanctuary city is that just. Um, the um, busload shows up, and then the city of New York or whatever city, I'm most familiar with New York, they have to deal with the situation that they have essentially additional homeless people. That's the problem um, in the first cut. It's just having additional homeless people, and they, in all these sanctuary cities, um, seem to be the ones that have more homeless people than they need in the first place. <laughs> um, so this just adds to the, um, the burden. Um, so if you think about it, what they're, now what they're doing is they're going to the federal government and they're saying, hey, look, we've got all these additional people um, and we need to have uh, money to support this program. Um, if you think about it, you'd say, well, maybe 
maybe if we didn't let them all come here to start with and we spent the money screening them quickly and sending them home, that would be a lot cheaper um, than sending money to sanctuary cities. Um, so it's, um, in terms of, um, you know, what it, obviously it gets a lot of attention. And, um, you know, the politics of it are to try to force the, um, you know, these basically democratic uh, controlled cities to put pressure on the administration to deal with the border. Um, so it's, uh, you know, it's, a, it's really a political ploy at the end of the day. Um, I don't know that they're sending enough people that it's, um, uh, when you consider how many hundreds of thousands they have to deal with, that it's making that much difference. Um, but it, it yeah. is a message, it and, definitely. Right, it's a message. Yeah. You probably half of them would have gone to those cities anyway, eventually. Mm -hmm. um, so <laughs> that's, um, that's a, yeah. certainly, it's a showcase. So um, one of the things that I think your firm deals with and, and uh, is really interesting is this uh, global competition for talent. Mm -hmm. These highly educated, highly skilled, highly desirable workers that I uh, imagine m are wanted in many countries around the world. Uh, how does that work in terms of immigration law? Well, it's, um, you know, the U.S. is the probably preferred destination for high-skilled workers. We're talking here about um, with competition for talent. We're talking about, you know, high-skilled workers, um, people with um, degrees. Um, Often and, going uh, to the tech industries, degrees. right? And, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And just to give you an idea, 38% um, of the Nobel Prize recipients in the U.S., the U.S. citizen Nobel Prize recipients started out as immigrants, 38% of them. Um, wow. 25% okay. of all the workers in STEM fields, you know, science, technology, engineering, or math, 25% of all those workers in the U.S., which has about a 2% unemployment rate, um, were foreign nationals or are foreign nationals. Um, so if this is the this is a you know a big part of our um, economy, and um, it's because we have um, we have a skills gap um, for workers um, with 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 those kinds of uh, backgrounds and skills. So we have a visa category for high skill workers, and we um, we allow eighty five thousand persons to come a year, twenty thousand with uh, graduate level degrees, and sixty five thousand with. Um, at least a bachelor's degree. Um, as it turns out, about 75% of the persons selected have graduate degrees. But here's the question or vid problem. Is there 85,000 slots? Last year, there were 483,000 applicants. So, so they want to come 20 here. Only 20% were able to come here. Now, the majority of those are graduates of U.S. universities. So they've come here to go to school, and uh, the majority of them have graduate degrees. And then they, when they apply to stay here, for, apply for one of these high-skill visas, um, there isn't one available. Um, and so that's what's happening. Now you contrast that with um, countries like, um, like Canada, and they say with, a, with their population, which as you know is about, what, about 40 million, something like that. Um, so it isn't as large as some of our state population. Mm -hmm. um, but Canada allows um, 50,000 foreign students who are educated in Canada um, to get a fast track to remain in Canada and become residents of Canada. So if you figure our population is you know, roughly 10 times the size of theirs, um, you know, we should be accommodating this 400,000 people, particularly those that we educated ourselves. Is um, there a move to expand that number from 85,000? Yes, there's thousand. a lot of resistance because there's always a very big debate about, you know, whether there really are Americans that can do these jobs, which, um, um, which is, uh, you know, which is very um, curious because it's, um, you know, I think the statistics show um, that there's plenty of jobs for STEM workers, particularly with graduate degrees, and particularly 
um, those with modern technologies. You know, regrettably, we have a certain number of, you know, persons in the, in the U.S. in those fields who, um, you know, need to get reskilled or, um, you know. Uh, yeah, this skills gap thing is yeah. for another entire interview because exactly. I'm sure that's a, that's a big, big problem. Uh, you know, just uh, very briefly, I mean, uh, when COVID came on the scene, um, countries uh, created strict restrictions and regulations with regard right. to moving around into and out of the country. Where are we now with that here in the U.S. and maybe some of the larger yeah. countries? Well, we're, we're basically getting rid of COVID restrictions. Um, uh, different, different countries have, um, you know, these restrictions vary. And they fall in a in a couple of buckets. One is um, there aren't any, right? <laughs> That's one one possible restriction. Um, most countries now don't a have any restrictions on returning citizens, like the U.S. has no restrictions on returning U.S. citizens or permanent residents. Um, but we still have restrictions on persons that are coming here as. Um, non-immigrants, as visitors, for instance, and they have to be, um, you know, fully vaccinated. Um, there are other countries where there is a bigger concern, like China. If you if you leave from China, Hong Kong, or Macau, you have to show that you had a COVID test. Um, and still, you COVID still have to free. do that. Yeah, from okay. those countries. Yeah, um, the EU and the. Um, um, the UK really don't have uh, restrictions except on uh, China also. Um, and then um, there are other countries um, who um, require um, either vaccinations or COVID tests. So it's uh, important to check and find out what the rules are, just as, um, just as one has to find out what the visa restrictions are and requirements. Um, it's important to find out what the COVID restrictions are. So um, in many cases, that's, um, you know, there, re there really aren't any. But there's some countries where you need to still fill out um, a health form, right? I recently went to Spain, and I had to fill out a, um, an online uh, form and, um, you know, got a, um, got a confirmation back that I had to show when, on, um, you know, when I got on the plane. Um, but I didn't have to have any tests or uh, anything. So they're yeah. going away, but you still need to check. You need to find yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Definitely. You could be running around the airport looking for COVID. <laughs> <laughs> well, Austin Fragman, thank yeah. you so much for being with us. Uh, yeah, you're just a fountain of information and a lot of kind of hot-button topics that you know about. So yeah. we appreciate your time. Well, my pleasure. I um, enjoyed speaking with you. And um um, you know, hope, hope this is the helpful to your audience. So thank I'm you. positive <laughs> it will be. All right. Thank you so much. And that wraps it up for us in the studio. Thank you, as always, for watching. And we'll see you next time right here in Studio 33480. Studio 33480 is brought to you by the Palm Beach Civic Association, our sponsor, Finley Galleries, and our viewers. We welcome your thoughts on how our programming can best serve our members and residents.